Hello everybody, Matt here on the planet. And if you've been watching the recent videos, you'll probably know now that I'm now running the Valencia Marathon 2024. So that's my next marathon, it's going up in December. Um, we started training for this uh, about four months ago and I've got another three months left to go in the training block. Um, so at this midpoint, I've just had, um, just had a week's break and that's been to, to kind of help me recover. Um, just a cool down week and now we're going back into the training block. But before we go into the next training block, the part B of the training block, should we call it, um, I'm going to go through all the data now with you. so you can see how things have been progressing. Um, I'm also going to explain how I've been training and how I'm going to change my training or continue my training as we go into this final three months of the final build up to, uh, to Valencia. Okay, so I have been training over the last, well, the last three training blocks really. I've been training more specifically over the last four months for the for this Valencia Marathon block. So my PR for the Marathon is three hours 23 from Manchester 2023. And we're planning the same years to go to Valencia at the end of the year um, and, and go for 3.10 again with that being such a fantastic circuit. So my bill for that one was about four months. So that was about 75 kilometers ish per week. Um, and about comes to about 300, 310 or something like that for the uh, for the for each month. Uh, in that, there was a split to speed work um, and long runs. In the, in the speed work, uh, that was divided between um, one week at the track and one week doing hyper intervals. So the track work was working down from three hours twenty uh, per rep down to um, uh, three hours ten, which is quite difficult to do at that stage. Um, but eventually got it on one set, I think it was, before uh, before I led into the Valencia Marathon just before. Uh, the high print intervals uh, were run at 3.45 minutes per kilometre pace, so they were 1k repeats effectively. Um, and I built them up from running 4 to 6. Uh, so one week was 4, then 5, then 6, and then managed to keep it about 6 all the way through the training block. And the long run for that was typically... Um, split well, I actually split the training block in, in, in kind of like two halves. So in the first half, it was really easy, steady stuff. There wasn't really much speed work in the long run, um, so I just took it easy and ran somewhere between 32 and 36 kilometers, um, like on a, on a weekend. As we got to the last two months of that training block, we're basically running um, six 40 kilometer runs um, over seven weeks. Now, it wasn't 40 kilometer runs like I'm doing at the moment, we're getting to that. Um, it was basically something along the lines of about 32 kilometers and the rest of it was kind of like warm up, cool down. In that 32 kilometer run-ish, um, or even up to 36 kilometers. And we did stuff like started off doing three times seven uh, and then build up to like kind of like two times 10, um, two times 12 kilometers, that kind of thing. And then I did the kind of a long, the longest test that it was about three weeks out, which was 32 kilometers at marathon goal pace. But as you know, if you've seen the video or you haven't seen the video, maybe you want to go and check that one out. I didn't uh, quite succeed in Valencia and come back with 3 hours 35. The next training block after that uh, was the last kind of like big marathon I did, which was the uh, the Manchester 2024 marathon. Um, again, trying to beat my PR 322, but I came back with 3 hours 30. Uh, it just wasn't my day. The training build for that was, again, four months. Uh, kilometers went up to about 330 kilometers per month, which is about eight kilometers per week. Um, the speed work I was doing was track intervals. Uh, again, worked them around about 310. I was pretty much at 310 anyway, but I was, you know, kind of, kind of bringing it down from about 315 or something at the start of the training block, um, and dividing those again with that with the hyper intervals. Um, difference. The main difference in that training block was the, the the long runs were kind of like split right from the start. So every other week I'd be running uh, 32 kilometers. Um, and then the other week I'd be doing kind of like about 35 kilometers ish, um, which is kind of like the workout. Um, I didn't really get as much workout runs in those, but I kind of increased the length of the workout. But, you know, even still within about a 35 kilometer run, um, I was doing typically about 17 kilometers, but I probably didn't get as much of those done in the training block that I wanted to do. Um, the biggest run I did that, that was uh, three times 10K, which I only managed to do twice in the training block. Moving into the training block for Valencia 2024, um, the last two were four months builds. This is a seven month build, so I've done like a four month build. I've then previously gone into a race situation. Um, this time I've had a week off where I kind of like, it was good to let kind of, you know, really let the body recover. Um, typically the mileage is about the same, 330 kilometers for the month and about 80 kilometers average is something that works out as per week. 
Uh, speed work was divided one week doing track work, um, no hyper intervals, um, because I wanted to really work on the speed, make it more of a VO2 max workout. Um, I wanted to really progress the, uh, the 800s and get them down to <clears throat> much faster, which I'll come on to later on. So it was kind of like 310 uh, previous training blocks, so I want to take that to the next stage. Um, and then right from the start of the training block, I've been doing it every other week as a long run speed workout. So again, the easy run every other week, typically 32 kilometers. Took me a, a few weeks to, get, to build that up, to get that to the point where um, I could do that regularly. So my long run was every other week, which was opposite to the week that I was doing my track work. So I was going, doing a hard VO2 max workout the track and then getting you know almost a week for the body recovery before I went out and did the, the long run speed work. So when I was doing the long run speed work, we're talking 39 to 40 kilometers and that's pretty much what I've done around about the 40 kilometer mark. But every session of that has had the three times 10 kilometers marathon goal pace effort in there. Uh, and that's been pretty much it. The The biggest, the closest one of the test was like kind of like a, a week or so just before I finished that period before I went to the cooling off week. Um, I did a 20 kilometer run rather than two times 10. So rather than doing three times 10, uh, I did one times 20 kilometers and then a 12 kilometer run, so I kind of made a little 32 kilometers. So that was kind of like the biggest workout that I did in the training block. So yeah, so that give you an insight in how we've been training. Um, similar, but it's been just kind of like a, a progression, um, a bit more structure, a bit more mileage as we're getting on through, through the three training blocks. So let's move over and have a look at the data. So first of all, we're going to look at the the, uh, the track progression. So that might be the easiest one to, to look at and go through. So throughout the the four months training block, I managed to do ten sessions there. So you've got along the bottom of the graph, you've got you've got it numbered one to ten. So on the left axis, we've got pace. Um, so that's the essentially what we're going to show there is the average pace per rep. So let's say we'll call it week one. In week one, so week one I went out and did the eight hundreds of the track. You can see that I've also put now my heart rate and the conditions. Three minutes and 14 seconds was the average rep time. The time I've got there in brackets is the seconds of the rest period. So my rest period there was 131. So that's like the average across the rest period for the whole of the reps. So some of them might have been a little bit longer, some of them might have been a bit of a shorter, but that's the average. Uh, so my target there was to get that just to see where I was straight after coming off a break because obviously I had a break between the last training block and starting this one. Um, so it was good to see where I was at. Uh, next week in again um, was to let's get back to where we were at the end of the last training block to run a 310. So I managed to run uh, a 309. So that's obviously the second session, but it's actually two weeks on. And then I went on the third session. It was a bit of a struggle there, not really looking at the temperature on the day, 11 degrees. I haven't put a note about the wind being bad or anything like that, so wasn't really affected by that. But sometimes it's like that, sometimes you struggle. Um, I did on that day, and that's the worst one of the whole training block. But you can't win them all. Um, and then in the fourth session, we managed to run 306, gradually getting it down. The fifth session, 304, and then 305, the next one. Looking at session seven, uh, we got that down to 301 with a 95 second rest period, average rest period. So the, the idea is to get my rest period down to 90 seconds. Um, and then looking at the eighth session, it was 27 degrees under there, hottest day of the, the, uh, the track session, one of the hottest days of the year in the UK. That was the actual temperature at the track that we measured. Blue sky, sun beating down here. Uh, and then still managed to pull off for three or three, although um, I was really, I remember I was really, really working hard and that was felt really dry. I feel like uh, I was really struggling with the hydration and the energy. Um, and on the ninth session, we had a good day. 15 degrees, can't complain with that. Um, I managed to get all the 10 down to two minutes, 59 seconds. Although uh, you could say 119 rest period was a little bit slow. You can see on session 10, um, struggled a bit more, I just didn't have it on that day. But the general trend over the over the four months uh, was that we we're getting the rep times down from 3.14 um, down to three minutes. So basically took about, you know, took 14 seconds off the rep time. So really happy with that. Just also to mention on the, what I put in there is obviously the heart rate that you can see on the track. So as, as my, that's my average heart rate for the whole session. Um, and the time's about the same, but just gradually 
you know, getting like a minute, half a minute faster each time as we're progressing through the workout. So it's typically around about 50 minutes, uh, kind of ended up at about 45 minutes at the fastest session. But if you look at the heart rate, when I'm running an average rep pace of three hours, three minutes, I should say, three minutes and 14 seconds, uh, heart rate's 163. Um, but then we gradually brought that down. I think, I don't know what was wrong with 147 at session three. That might have been right, but um, gradually bringing it down. You know, we've gone down at a 259 average rep pace at a heart rate of 159. So we're dropping like kind of, you know, four to five beats per minute throughout the whole session um, and dropping like kind of 14 seconds off. My heart rate is, the data I've got for that is pretty accurate because I'm using this chorus heart rate band strap that will hook up to your, um, it's chorus, but will hook up to your Garmin um, or I think any any watch that can accept a broadcasted heart rate. So, and that's, I really like this one because you can wear it kind of like on the forearm or, you know, the upper arm uh, rather than having to wear it around your chest. A bit more comfortable. So we'll move on to evaluating the long runs, which I feel is a bit more important than, than the track work. Um, although we'll both kind of like feed off each other. And I'll explain afterwards where I think we're going to go in the next part of the training block or what I want to do. So here's another graph. Um, yes, I've put the graph up here as well. Um, I've got some notes about what was going on in the sessions as well. Um, things like when, I, when, it was at, when it was windy or whether it was wind wasn't a problem, uh, when I've used an ice pack. Uh, but that was towards the end of it where I was, you know, it was so hot. Use an ice pack, so I've got one of these things. Uh, there's a video on the channel about that recently. Um, and that helps. <coughs> Just put ice in it, put it around my neck. Um, I've got five, ten kilometers, of, you know, with having a, a really cold thing around my neck when the sun's beating down on me, and that helped a lot. Uh, but I didn't use that towards the end. So when I first started off doing these reps, um, you can see in the first session, the first four or five sessions, I really struggled. Um, to even, you know, to coming back into the training block, sometimes I wasn't able to get up to the 40 kilometers. Um, and even when I did get up to the 40 kilometers, I was quite slow in the last set. So that's, so when you look at session one and it says average rep is the uh, average rep times, so that's seconds, that's four minutes, 30 seconds, below that four minutes, 34 seconds. <coughs> so <coughs> obviously I'm looking for a 30 or better. So where, where it's in green, that's where we're saying it's 30 or better. So we did the 30, and obviously the second rep is obviously a bit slower. So I'm running around the quayside. It's not the perfect place to run. Uh, it is flat generally, but it's not. There's, there's a bit of a camber. There's some gravel sections, some spirally staircase type bridge areas that you have to run through. So it's not perfect, um, you know. But it's the best I've got, and I'm you know quite happy that I've, I've got that quite lucky. I can run and train in that area. Moving across to the graph as well. You can see that um, the green bar, so where you've got three bars, green, blue, and red, you've got the sessions on the bottom, and above it, you've got a green, blue, and a red. If you haven't got the red there, that's because I didn't do the third stint. So the green is the first stint, the blue is the second stint, um, and the red is the third stint, obviously. So you can pretty much see in the green section, I hit the stint time perfectly every time. Um, I either get 430 per kilometer or a bit faster than that. And the blue's not bad either. Most of the time it's there or thereabouts. Uh, there are a couple that slip back kind of like to the to the 340 time. Um, <clears throat> but you can really see better in, you know, the first time I did in this training block, um, I was way off the pace in sessions two and sessions five in the third stint, uh, 459 and 451 minutes per kilometer. So I want to get those down to as close to 430 minutes per kilometer as I can do. Appreciate. I'm running in an area where it's not going to be as nice and smooth as Valencia. So if I can bring that, you know, close to that, if I can't get to 430 minutes per kilometer, that's what I want to do. That's the goal. But if I can't, if I can get as close to that kind of like 435, um, I'm really happy with that. 440, not too bad. I can, I'd, I'd take that in the last session. But I think I can do better. And we'll see where we go in the part B of the training block with that. But uh, generally, as you can see, there's a trend there where I've struggled in the, you know, in the, in the second half or the last third, you might say. Of the long run. Uh, just making a note on the heart rate. Um, so the way that the way that I've done this is taken the average. This is the average heart rate for the stint part of the the run only, not the whole forty kilometers. So it's it's an average for the three times ten. And what I've actually done is because 
because when you're, you're running steady, you go up in the first one kilometer, um, the heart rate where it might have been uh, about, let's say like 135, 140. So I've deleted that from, from the average. So that doesn't, so you only count the last nine in a 10 kilometer stint. So it would actually be a little bit lower than that, but I've calculated that as we're trying to only just consider or compare, you know, when your heart rate gets up to kind of like the steady state. So the average was 163 at the start. Gradually that's come down. Um, you know, we start off at the low 160s and by the end of it, we're down at the, the low 150s. Appreciate some of the stints um, would have been faster uh, at the start uh, at the earlier, of the earlier sessions. But generally the trend is that the heart rate for the same effort is, is coming down. Um, I've also put in there the peak. So basically the highest, if you look at the graph on it, you can go and check the Strava data if you want. As the data is going up, um, as the heart rate's going up, um, it peaks at certain points. It might be you know, going over the, the uphill sections, the bridge sections, things like that. It's only for a short space of time, um, but that's the peak of it. So you can see typically it's about 166, 167. Uh, there were a couple of runs there where it was down at actually only even 160 is the, is the peak, which is you know kind of a really good run if you're looking at session six. Once again, the heart rate data from that is very good. Uh, it, it's not going to be beat perfect all the time, um, but it's it's pretty consistent throughout the run. So I'm quite happy that I'm seeing my heart rate come down for about the same effort in a marathon run. Uh, just note that the feeling as well when I was in these last, when we were looking at kind of like session seven, eight, nine, when I was, you know, much faster. Uh, feeling really really strong and actually there's a session 10 on this that, that I've done and um, that you don't see on the data um, but I remember running that session uh, and that was comparable to these but uh, I just felt so strong at the end and I've made a point to to reduce my downtime because some of these sessions I've stopped to change shoes I've stopped for quite a long time to put the ice into the ice pack um, so there could be this this average pace column here um, I've actually got you know, there's, there's time adding on to that a little bit for various things. But I made a point on my last run uh, to minimise the downtime, to the stoppage time. So, so, so far I've managed to do a 40 kilometre run um, with only three minutes of downtime. Uh, pace comes out at about 4.58 per kilometre. Um, so that's 30k of it at roughly marathon goal pace, 4.30, 4.35 uh, minutes per kilometre. Um, and then the rest of it round about somewhere between 5.30 and 6 minutes per kilometre. Um, so I'm really quite happy with that with the time that I've got there. Um, <clears throat> I do have a note down there as well regarding the heart rate. Uh, if you look at section session one, looking at ideally I want to keep my heart rate below 160, roughly around about 160 is my limit of me my LT1. I don't want to be running um, above 160 ideally. It, inevitably it's probably going to happen at some point in the race, but. If I can keep it consistently below 160 for, for the for the whole race, that's the aim. Maybe, maybe not. Um, we'll keep it in that kind of like LT1 threshold where the body can, uh, the body obviously producing um, lactate, uh, the byproduct of lactate, but we can also clear it at the same time. Um, so hopefully I won't fatigue, hopefully I won't get cramps and things like that later on in the race. But yeah, so looking at session one, um, I was only half a kilometre before 160, before I hit 160 beats per minute. Um, and as we're on, we got to session two, two kilometres before that, um, three, four, moving on. Uh, session five, I made a note there that it was nine kilometres before I hit uh, 160, but it was like, you know, I was going uphill at that point as well. Um, and then looking at sessions eight and nine, we've got 14 kilometres in a 20 kilometre stint. So session eight was actually 20 kilometers of marathon call pace rather than doing two tens at the start i just did 120 and i've made a note at session nine that it's 11k uh, before 160 so although it varies a little bit you know pretty much i was hitting 160 beat, um 160 beats pm at the start uh but by the end of it it was like you know i'm getting well into into the run or well into the stint before i'm actually hitting um 160 beats per minute so that's basically the data. You see me progression. I'm quite happy with it. Managed to get the rep times down at the track, um, down to down to three minutes per kilometre. I'm going to carry that forward now. Um, I managed to make some progress in the long run, in the 40k long run. Um, not 
as much as probably as I want to, but I'm, I'm really quite happy with the data that I've got so far. Uh, something to build on in, the, in kind of like the next three months. So what are we going to do in the next three months? So this is the exciting bit. We've got uh, some really good data. We've had a really good uh, four months of training. Uh, part A, now we're going to the part B. Uh, what do I want to do? Well, I think it's been, I think it's been working out really well. Um, and not having too many speed sessions. Um, but I think I want to kind of like, I'm still going to do my track 800s. At the track, I'm going to keep doing the 800s and I'm either going to increase uh, the duration uh, of the session, so take it from, from 10 reps to 11, 12, 13, maybe up to 15 reps. And we're just going to kind of feel this out as I'm going through. Um, and try and keep the try and keep the uh, the downtime at um, ninety seconds because actually the last track session of it, which isn't part of this, um, I managed to get pretty much all down at three minutes per kilometer with a ninety second rest period. Or because we're training for the marathon, we want to. I want to keep. You know, it's all about you're running for a long period of time. So if I can rather than getting faster and faster and faster, because at the moment I'm going for three hours ten in the marathon. I'm not going for sub three just yet. So the pace is fast enough at 3.45 minutes per kilometre, each rep about three minutes. Uh, but if I can kind of like do that um, and, and just grow the session uh, even more, I might do, we'll see how it goes, we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll end up doing uh, 10 times 800 and bolting on some 400s at the end of that. Um, you know, doing a little bit faster work, or even some 200s, but we'll see how it goes. But I want to keep that core session uh, of the 10 by 800s because I think that's worked really really well to do some faster speed work and then the next week I'll go and do the 40k long run with a, a little bit slower than my track work at 430 minutes per kilometer but extending out so I, and I think each session has fed the other session so I'm kind of really happy with that where where I want to go with a long run because it's kind of like taking it's taken half the training block to kind of like get it where I'm really comfortable and feeling really, really strong um, at the end of you know that 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 third stint, um, three times ten k. I want to grow these, so it's going to be not three times ten k, but it's going to be three times eleven k, um, three times twelve k, um, and possibly three times thirteen k, which is pretty much going to be on the whole forty k. Is going to be run at marathon goal pace. Uh, the problem with that is there is there is a section of the quayside where I can't run it, where I've got a hill in there, uh, quite a big hill, um, which just makes it almost impossible. But I could probably kind of run through it knowing that I'm going to go a bit slower. So we'll see how that goes. But to try and not be doing that, you know, every week, but just gradually kind of like grow it. Maybe every, well, I'm doing every other, every two weeks, but maybe every fourth week I might add on a little bit more distance to the stints. Uh, but kind of like, you know, trying to, Really try and keep it going, consolidate it, try and get those third stints down close to 430 minutes per kilometer. Um, at the same time, we'll try and grow it from 10K stints to 11K, 12K and 13K possibly, or some of them 10K, some of them 12 or 13K. The other thing that I'm gonna do in the training block is continue trying to, well, obviously the hydration that I use uh, the nutrition I use typically the precision ones, but more recently I've been doing more work with the uh, the nun. Uh, you need less water for these. Things. Each one of these tablets is 750 milligrams, I think. Yeah, 750 milligrams of sodium, um, and you need 500 milligrams, 500 milliliters of water. In the nun electrolyte, it's 900 milligrams of sodium, and you only need 250 milliliters of water. So. And that kind of that kind of works for me better. I do sweat a lot of salt, about a thousand milligrams of salt per hour, but I find that I don't need to take on that much water to be able to. I can take more salt on, but I don't need to take on too much too much water. So these are probably better for me than these. Um, I still use these, and I'm still working out what I'm going to use on race day. Uh, energy wise, I've recently just got some of the Morton 320. Um, I usually use the Morton 3, uh, 160 drink so i have some of that the night before um, and and during during the run um, it's basically the same it's just a bigger packet um, but for the same volume of water so you've got uh, i think it's 80 grams of carbs in there is it 
All right, 79 grams of carbs in there um, for 500 mils, which is double what you get in the 160. So, you, you know, you're taking on the same amount of water, but getting double the energy. So we're really looking forward to trying that out. Hopefully that gives me more energy in the race. Uh, that's what Kipchoge uses, so must be good. Uh, gel strategy, I take six gels and I'll continue to do that. Uh, maybe that'll do seven in the run. So I have a mixture of these type of gels. So you've got the, the Morton, normally it's the Morton 100 and the CAF 100 and you alternate those through the run. Um, I've recently been trying out the gel 160 which is basically just a bigger packet, which you, so you get like an extra third, uh, third of gel in there. And at the moment I'm finding it too too much, it's too big to take in one go. Um, but I'm gonna try and work with that um, and see if I can get that in. So see if I can actually take in uh, more energy than, than I have been doing before. In the past, I've, I've you know, I've, there's, there's time gone by when I look back the first time I ran the marathon, I think I only took four gels or something like that. Um, and and if I, if I did take more, I only took them um, from kind of like, you know, like kind of like 17 kilometers onwards, something like that. Um, it's been something that, you know, I've, I've had to develop and train the stomach and I could only really take gels on for about two hours and my stomach couldn't take much more. But now I can pretty much take gels on for the whole three hours and I'm getting to the point where I'm experimenting with taking another gel at the start, although typically I take the first gel at five or six kilometers in, so that's something I'm experimenting with. Uh, usually at the end of the races, I'll have one of these, which is the Focus 90 gel. Uh, three grams, not milligrams, three grams of beta alanine in there, um, and also 200 milligrams of caffeine in there. Okay, so that is, that's the review of the training block and where we are now, what we're gonna do going forward. We've got another three months now, really looking forward uh, to getting to Valencia um and, and seeing what we can do um yeah i've been pretty much registered for this race you know for pretty much since since um a week or two or a month maybe after valencia finished last year um i didn't know i wanted to do it or not um but the offer came out and i thought let's sign up um if i don't want to do it i can cancel it um so i signed up for it and i thought about it i thought about it there were other options to do i could have uh, could have gone somewhere like Amsterdam, ran uh, ran an autumn marathon like a lot of people do, but I just thought uh, for me probably Valencia is the best, but I hadn't booked up all the hotels and stuff like that, things, flights and things, um, until quite late on, uh, partly because it's, it's, it's even more expensive than it was last year, it's just getting more and more popular. Um, and I think I probably, I've, I, I don't think, I really think I won't be going back next year or you know, for quite a while, going back to Valencia again. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Um, if I don't crack it this time, I think Valencia is not a race for me. It was a little bit too hot uh, on the day that time. Um, and maybe that's something that's kind of not in my favor. Although I think I was a wheel with some kind of a cold of some sort that I had on the, on the race day last time. But yeah, it's been. I really wanted to focus purely on the training and not think about having to to run another marathon. I th thoughts were in my mind about potentially running Chester again, just kind of a, an attempt to see where I was at halfway through the training block. But in the end, I decided I don't want to bother with the expense. I don't want to bother with the delay. And it was good to have um, have a long build up, the longest build up I've ever done, um, and just have a week off and then come back after the week. Uh, the cooling off week and you know feeling so fresh and strong and I've been able to go out and do a 40 kilometer long run um, and feeling really strong at the end of it so I'm I don't know if this is the best way to do it but um, so far it's looking good and we'll find out when we're in Valencia. So I think that's all I've got to say on the training and uh, thanks for sticking through that I know it's been quite long um, there's been a lot of data and a lot of numbers to look at. Uh, by all means, if you've got any questions or you, you think I've missed something, uh, there's something else that you want me to discuss or answer, just drop me uh, drop me a question in the comments. And yeah, so there's gonna be a lot of training videos coming up about how we, we're getting on, how it's progressing, how we're building up to the Valencia Marathon 2024 in December. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Next video, we'll be training videos. We'll be back outside again, so hopefully you look forward to seeing that. Escribieron la historia de esta ciudad.
Thanks everybody who watches the channel. Ah, I don't know what was wrong with me today. Maybe I should quit.